Humans love sugar. There's something about that sweet taste that our brains just can't get enough of, whether it's cold ice cream, melt in your mouth candies, or a rich steaming cup of hot chocolate. We've been trying to extract this flavor for almost the entirety of human history. And for a long time, there were only two ways to sweeten things. You could use natural sugars like honey, or you could extract sugar from sugar cane. But did you know that you can also extract sugar from vegetables like sugar beets? It's a hard process, one that requires a lot of knowledge about chemistry and agriculture, and for a long time, scientists couldn't quite figure out how to make it work in the United States. This changed in the late 1800s, due in large part to the research of a scientist named Dr. Rachel Lloyd. I'm Caroline from WowStem, and let's dive in to food chemistry, sugar beets, and the sweet science that Rachel Lloyd discovered along the way. How can you tell if something is sweet? This might seem like an obvious question. Just taste it. But if you think about it, our sense of taste is pretty awesome. Our taste buds can detect thousands of complex microscopic chemicals and translate those signals into a sense of taste. But it's pretty hard to identify which chemicals cause which specific tastes. There's a whole field of science that studies this called food science. When I say that your food is full of chemicals, that might sound a little scary. But in reality, everything is made of chemicals. A chemical is just a substance that contains only one type of molecule. And while the word might make you think of a lab filled with test tubes of bubbling neon liquid, in reality, chemicals don't necessarily have to be synthetically made. For example, water is a chemical made up of the molecule H2O. So how exactly do we know what chemicals are inside the foods that we eat? Could we use chemistry to detect the molecules that our taste buds are so good at detecting? Could we even use chemistry to make our foods taste better? These are the kinds of questions that chemists were trying to answer in the late 1800s, including a chemist named Rachel Lloyd. Rachel was born in 1839, and she wasn't always interested in chemistry. It wasn't really until she was 20 years old that she started learning about the field from her husband, Franklin Lloyd. Franklin was a chemist, and he set up a laboratory in their home, which Rachel credits for sparking her love of the field. Tragically, Franklin died only six years later, when Rachel was only 26. And after that, she decided to use her newfound love of chemistry to support herself. Rachel learned a lot from her late husband, but she also worked hard to further her chemistry education. She took classes at Harvard University, pursued her own independent chemical research, and became the first female chemist to publish in a major journal. She also was determined to get her doctoral degree, but at the time, no institutes in the United States would give a PhD to a woman. So she enrolled in school in Europe and became the first American woman and the second woman in the world to get a PhD in chemistry. Dr. Lloyd was invited to teach at the University of Nebraska's brand new chemistry department. There, she decided to focus her research on a new crop in the American West, the sugar beet. Since around the 1700s, people had been trying to extract sucrose, a sugar, from these vegetables by a chemical process. But beet sugar had so far been a commercial failure in the United States. The process for extracting the sugar didn't work super well, which gave it a bad taste, and poor agricultural practices often caused the crops to fail. So Dr. Lloyd began research to figure out the best way to grow sugar beets to extract the most sugar out of them. To figure out the best agricultural practices, her students and collaborators sent seeds to farmers all across Nebraska, and asked them to send back the beets that they grew. Dr. Lloyd and her students then tested the sugar content of these beets to figure out how it depended on the growing conditions. Dr. Lloyd and her students looked at over 700 different specimens of beets, looking at over four different species and tons of different weather and soil conditions. To measure the beet sugar content, Dr. Lloyd used something called a saccharometer. A saccharometer is a weighted glass bulb with a long, thin tube and it uses buoyancy to measure the sugar concentration of a solution that it's floating in. Dr. Lloyd would extract the sugar out of a beet, dissolve that sugar in a set amount of water, and then float the saccharometer in the solution. Because sugar solutions are more dense than water, the bulb will float a little higher. With the instrument properly calibrated, Dr. Lloyd could use the saccharometer to precisely measure the amount of sugar in a solution. Saccharometers are super sensitive instruments, and they're actually still used today to measure the amount of sugar in things like wine and ice cream. Dr. Lloyd's research group found that with the right species of sugar beet and the right farming conditions, 
They could grow sugar beets that produced high quality and sweet sugar. With these findings, the sugar beet industry in Nebraska exploded, and it's still a major industry there today. Food science and chemistry have come a long way since the 1800s. We now have chemicals that can produce almost any flavor imaginable, artificial sugars that taste almost as good as the real thing, and complex food molecules that are produced entirely within a lab. But most American-made sugar is actually still produced from sugar beets. In fact, most white sugar in grocery stores isn't labeled by the plant that it comes from. So the next time you're pouring sugar into a recipe, it very well could be from a Nebraskan sugar beet, a tasty testament to Dr. Rachel Lloyd's sweet research.